All right, welcome back. This is Coach Anthony back with another Fortnite, uh, excuse me, Unreal Editor for Fortnite tutorial. And today we are gonna be talking about material instances. So in the last video, I talked a little bit about the introduction to materials and we are gonna get way more advanced inside of the shader graph. Uh, but before we can really take the next step into getting into some of the cooler things you can do with materials, uh, it's very important to highlight one of the coolest things that Unreal Engine and Unreal Editor for Fortnite have going for it, and that is material instances. So let's go ahead and look at an example of why this is so important and why I love material instances. Let's say we have two blocks. Okay, so I have block one here, and then let's say we have another block, block two right here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the material we made last time, this little material right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to both of these materials. And I'm like, you know, this looks good and I'm, I'm really happy with this, but let's say uh, I wanted everything to be the same about these guys, but I just want this one to be slightly uh, less shiny or more shiny, right? As you can see here, if I go into this material and I start to change things, like let's say I make this one metallic, right? Let's say I make it really metallic. When I click save, first off notice, there's what we would call a compile time. You see, whenever a uh, material is changed in any way inside of Unreal Engine, uh, Unreal has to actually compile the shader, right? Which does take time. And the more materials you have assigned and the more things you're working with, the more time this is just gonna take in general. So when I click save here, there's already gonna be a little bit of wait time. The more materials, again, the longer that wait time. So although that was pretty quick, understand that that may take a while. And then secondly, as you can see, it changed it for both of my materials. Well, is that really what I wanted? No, I just wanted one material to change. So I've lost a little bit of customization. Now, is the answer to create a new material for each one of these? Uh, the answer is no. This is a good example of when we can actually create uh, material instances. Material instances are like variants of a specific material, right? So rather than it being um, the same material, you can create a instance of it, which inherits all the base properties, but allows the material to be very flexible in how it's used. And let's go ahead and look at that now. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on the my tutorial here, and I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to 0.2. Okay, and then I'll keep everything the same. So rather than changing the value like that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this node here and I'm gonna click convert to parameter. This is gonna make it so that when I create a material instance, I have the ability to edit this property of the shader. And we'll, we'll look at more what that means, okay? So I'm gonna call this metallic. I'm calling it metallic because that's the node it's connected to. I'm gonna come here, right click as well, and I'm gonna call this roughness just like so, okay? So as you can see, I have default values, but these are not parameters. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and save, okay? And rather than having a material assigned to these, I'm now gonna right click on my guys here, and I'm actually also gonna come here and create a new folder called materials. Boom, inside this folder, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create base materials. And then here I'm gonna call this material instances. Okay, all right, so now I'm gonna to go to my tutorial content uh, inside of my materials graph. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this, this, and uh, this, and drag it into my base materials. Boom, okay. All right, so here's where my base materials are. I'm now gonna right click on this guy here, and I'm gonna do create material instance. Uh, this is going to be a child material that essentially inherits all the main node properties of the parent base material but allows you to customize the parameters that we just made. So let's look at what that means in English, I guess. I'm gonna go ahead and come here and I'm gonna call this mi underscore tutorial t-u-t-u-r-i-a-l one, okay? I'm gonna drag this one now, not into this guy here, but into my material instances. So I'm gonna drag this guy here and there and I'm gonna go ahead and rename this, not sure how it got to material instances. Well, okay, all right. Uh, coming in here, this guy should be in there. Move. There we go. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and apply that to this material here, bam. 
and I'm gonna right click again on my base material and I'm gonna create another one and I'm gonna call this mi underscore uh, tutorial uh, two. Okay, and I'm gonna again drag that into here. Okay, so now I'm gonna take one and drag it on this guy, and I'm gonna take two and drag it on this guy. As you can see now, I have assigned the material instance. I don't recommend assigning base materials to your meshes. I recommend always changing it to a material instance. Uh, number one, it just works better at runtime anyways, right? Uh, it just takes less on the engine to do that. And then number two, uh, you have a lot of advantages here. The big advantage is that you can change the material in real time, meaning that there's no compile time now if I wanna change the material. Let's look at what that means. I'm gonna go ahead and open up material one now. And as you can see, when we talked before, the parameters that I made in my base material, let's go ahead and look at that again, that was, again, the metallic and the roughness, are now here and ready for me to edit. So if I wanna change those two parameters, I just click this checkbox here and now I can make this one fully metallic and as you can see that did that I can come here and I can change the roughness and believe it or not you can have as many parameters as you want the whole idea here is now I have full customization and I can actually change this now in real time and not have to wait for a compile time right and this is the big 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 advantage this is now a child instance of my base material and of course I can now do that with my second guy Right? And as you can see, this is much, much easier to come in here and customize it like so, because now I have a lot of customization over this, but it takes very little time to do. And that is the big, big advantage of material uh, instances. They are child materials that inherit all the properties of the base material shader graph, but you have the ability to customize the parameters and you can have uh, as many parameters as you want. You know, obviously there's a little bit of stipulation there with, you know, how good your computer runs and all that kind of stuff, but there are some tricks to get around that as well. Okay, so most of the time I will be converting shaders into parameters like so, and these are customizable things that I want to be in there so that I can customize my material, right? And this is a very, very important thing. You really have to know this because it's super duper duper important. Like for example, if I wanted to customize a base color, right? I could come in here and do the exact same thing here. Maybe I want the default to be red for whatever reason. Drag this in here. I have, again, remember that alpha we talked about in the last video. Uh, this node doesn't have an alpha, but I could also give this an alpha. And I'm gonna drag this in here. And as you can see, I now have this red and I can come here and call this tint. And then of course I can create another parameter here and call this uh, blend or tint amount. Come here and drag this in so I could have no tint, right? Or I could have full tint, or I could have something in between. We'll set it to 0 0.5 as the default value. And what's also nice is you can come here and even describe um, here a little bit. So come here and I can create like a description for my stuff. So I have the parameter name, I have a min max that I can set. Um, I can put it in a group if I wanted to group it uh, and I can create a description, right? And all of these are super duper 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 helpful when creating actual materials in real time. So now when I go ahead and click save here, you'll notice that that tint amount and tint color now come up and for my both my material one and two, and now I can start to customize as maybe I want this to be like more of a blue wood here, uh, tint amount being like 0 0.2, I could come here and make it more metallic and maybe 0 0.5 on the roughness, right? And then I can come here and maybe I'll just keep this the same. And as you can see, I had a lot of customization, although these are the same material, uh, because the material instances system that exists inside of the Unreal Editor, I have a lot of customization here and it's very quick and effective for your computer. As well as rendering, these render a lot better than base materials. So I hope this video helped. This is just a very quick demonstration of what material instances are. And the next video, I really plan on showing you a lot of the common tricks that I like to use when working with materials and how to really take your material game to the next level because materials really is what makes you, makes like a good level designer is that you know the basics of materials, but a great level designer has the materials like down to a science and they can really kind of create a lot of really cool things just by thinking about it and generating the material. And that's really important because eventually you'll learn how to create material landscapes 
and you know landscape is obviously a big part of the level okay so if this video helped you in any ways please like and subscribe drop a comment if you have any questions thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next one